Hey guys, Will Workman here with Workman Protection, here to give you some skills and tools to help make your concealed carry life a little better. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about my everyday carry, what type of gear that I carry, what type of tools that I carry, and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to share that with you guys today and show you what I carry and why I do. First, if you are new to concealed carry or you're just trying to figure out what works best for you, how to conceal your firearm the best possible way you can, I wanna give something to you. I wanna give you my guide to concealment. You can find that in the link below. And that's something that will really help you figure out your body type and what options you have for hiding a firearm and how to conceal the best possible way. All right, so what is a part of my everyday carry? First thing I wanna share with you is my OC spray. OC spray is something that I think is thought of as a throwaway item. Most people that kind of start talking about concealed carry immediately jump to a gun. There's a reason why law enforcement carries this. They're gonna be in situations where they may have to defend themselves and the firearm is not the best tool. I had an incident that I'll probably talk about later where I accidentally sprayed myself with bear spray and I will tell you it will stop you in your tracks and make you regret your life choices. It will really ruin your day if you get sprayed with this stuff. It can be a really, really useful self-defense tool. The one I carry is Palm OC Spray. They're like 10 bucks. I have no relationship with the company I bought this uh, off Amazon, but it's small. Clip it into the side of my pocket, kind of like a pocket knife. It's a really useful tool when it's not the right time or place for a firearm, but you still need to defend yourself. OC Spray is a really important tool to have. All right, the next thing is my trauma kit. It's kind of two parts to it. This is my tourniquet that I carry currently. This is a SWAT T. The SWAT T is basically like a big stretchy band. It's really thick um, and you, you basically stretch it and it's got some shapes on it and it kind of gives you instructions on there. As you stretch it out, it gets tighter and you basically wrap it around, whether it's an arm or a leg, you wrap it around and tuck it into itself thing that I like about the SWAT T is that it can be used as a pressure dressing as well. If you don't do it too tight and you, you know, have gauze or have a t-shirt or something that you're trying to stop bleeding, maybe like in a juncture area, like a neck or an armpit or something, then you can wrap it and use it as a pressure dressing. I just keep it in my back pocket, honestly, is why I started carrying the SWAT T because my wallet goes on one side and my tourniquet goes on the other side. I also have a cat tourniquet, uh, but that's kind of in my car kit because it's a little bit bulkier. Um, it's just got some plastic on it, so it's hard to stick in your pocket because it's kind of rounded. This is what I carry everything else in. This is an ankle kit. It's Mountain Man Medical, and I am an affiliate with them, but uh, I bought this long before I was an affiliate. I've been carrying it long before I was an affiliate. So they didn't give me any of this for free. This is something that I, I bought on my own. You can buy the Active Self Protection Ankle Cuff from Mountain Man Medical's website, and of course I'll link the affiliate link below. But you can buy it all together already packed, which is great in hindsight. I probably should have done that because um, I think it's a little bit smaller and more concise than mine ended up being. But I already had a kit with all of this stuff in it that I have bought over the years and then eventually decided I wanted to carry it on the ankle cuff. So I just bought the ankle cuff by itself and kind of put my stuff in it. This is a chest seal. Chest seal is really important if you have a gunshot wound or a stab wound or some kind of puncture wound in the chest. You want to seal that air off so that it can't get into that cavity and um, cause the lung to collapse. The next thing that I have in here is an Israeli bandage. It has a little hook on it so that when you wrap it around, you can kind of hook through that plastic piece and pull back and it gives you pressure. If you have some type of injury that you need to add pressure to, but maybe is not as bad as needing a tourniquet, or maybe is in a place where you can't put a tourniquet, an Israeli bandage is a great way to really put pressure on that area and help stop the bleeding. This is a quick clot. This is a pretty small one just because I'm carrying it on my ankle, but it is basically a gauze and it's got a hemostatic agent, which means a way to clot blood a little easier. It will stop the bleed faster. If you've got something that you really need to add pressure to, it will do a lot of the same thing this will do, but it will work faster uh, because it has that hemostatic agent that helps clot the blood. 
The other things I have in here, face shield for CPR, and then just some trauma shears. These are just some cheap throwaway shears that have like a little clip on them. Eight bucks on Amazon or something. And I just got these because they were small, they were shorter. There's like a little pocket on the front there, a little boo-boo kit. I've got like some Neosporin, just some band-aids to stick in there because life happens, you know? And some gloves that are just kind of shoved down there. I don't wanna get them out because I've got them rolled really tightly. Like I said, I've had to use this on three separate occasions. Having a trauma kit is really, really important. And it's something that can really save your life or save the lives of people around you. All right, the next thing that I have in my concealed carry is my Glock 19. It is a Gen 4, although it does not have finger grooves. So I uh, took a Dremel to this and took all the finger grooves off. I did a stippling job on it and then the trigger, I had a trigger job done at a local gun shop. This is an Apex trigger. I carry this gun for one simple reason, not because it is the best gun for everybody, not because it conceals better than any other gun, not because it's the best gun on the market, but simply because I shoot this gun the best. And that is balanced with, can I conceal it? But I shoot this gun the best. It would be a lot easier for me to carry my Glock 43 in terms of concealment, but I find a way to conceal this because I shoot it a lot better than I do the 43. The sights on this gun are just standard Glock night sights. And then I have the uh, TLR1 uh, HL Streamlight. It's just something that I kind of wanted. It's just another option. I figured, you know, if I can carry a gun this big, what's the difference in adding a little bit of extra weight and having a light on there in case I ever need it? I do carry just the standard 15 round mag and then my spare mag that goes in my holster is a 17 round mag. I definitely think a Glock 19 is a great option uh, when you're looking for your first gun, but just because it's my favorite and it's right for me does not mean it's gonna be your favorite or that it's perfect for you. It all depends on how you shoot it and what you shoot best. So I would encourage you if you can borrow somebody's gun that you know and trust, borrow their holster and go take a couple classes. Go see what it feels like in training, go see what you like about it, what you don't like about it, rather than buying the tool and then trying to learn the skills, even if that tool may not be the right one for you. All right, so last but certainly not least is my holster setup. This is kind of a wacky looking rig. Unless you know what the Filster Enigma is, you've probably never seen anything like this. And you're like, Will, what is this? It's from another planet. This is very new. I have never seen another company do anything like Filster has done. This is the only holster that I could recommend that you don't have to wear a gun belt with because it has its own belt system and the holster and the chastity system itself is safe. You can carry it literally with anything. So this holster shell is a Henry holster. Filster is the company that makes this Filster Enigma. That's the belt system and this whole chastity system here. And then this is a JM Custom mag carrier. I have never seen anyone else set their Enigma up like this with the mag carrier, uh, but it's just something that I wanted to try to do. This connector piece here is something that I got from Henry Holster as well. So I set that up basically to be kind of like a sidecar. The Enigma system is really cool because it's got this belt system with it. I paid a little extra and got this sport belt that actually has these little pockets. I have stuck like a, a tourniquet in one of these, my phone in one of these, uh, my OC spray in one of these, and then like my ID, uh, concealed carry, and debit card in this, and then not have to have anything in my pockets. I also have a wedge on the back of my holster that's a pretty aggressive angle. I made that out of just a yoga block from, um, from a yoga block, just sanded it down to make it exactly how I wanted it. Sarah from Filster has a, a video on how to make one out of a yoga block. And then they also have holster wedges that are completely customizable. They come with a bunch of different pieces that you can put onto your holster, but I had already made this one when that one came out. It follows all of my safety rules for a holster. It completely covers the trigger guard, holds it very tight, but I can get a consistent draw. Also, once you tighten these and kind of get exactly how you want, then this belt holds it very securely. So I love this because I can carry it in gym shorts. I've shot competitions in gym shorts before, a suit and tie, you can carry it with a tucked in shirt, with a polo tucked in, whatever you want to carry. I've seen some stuff where women have carried it uh, with dresses and you know yoga pants and all kinds of stuff like that. 
because you don't need a belt system. You don't need belt loops. You don't need sturdy pants, anything like that. This is kind of an all in all kind of thing. It's got your belt and everything attached to it. So uh, the Filster Enigma is definitely my favorite new addition to my everyday carry. I've been carrying them for about five months. Just really nice people over there, just a great company. Guys, I hope this has been helpful for you. Figure out what works for you, what you want to carry, what you need to carry on a regular basis and make it work for you. Just because a type of gear works great for me doesn't mean that it's perfect for you, but I definitely recommend all the stuff that I carry. I care a lot about quality, and that's why I carry quality gear. Guys, I hope this has been helpful to you on your own concealed carry journey. Like and subscribe below for more videos like this, and let me know in the comments what other stuff do you guys wanna see. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.